Welcome, and let's read God's Word together on this day number 335. Today we read Esther 7 and 8, Isaiah 42, and 2 Thessalonians 3. May the Lord bless you real good today, and we'll start with Esther 7. In Esther 5, Haman planned to impale Mordecai on a pole in the NLT, or just hang him on gallows in the GNT. But on the same night that Haman planned for that murder, God caused the king to have a sleepless night and to read in the annals of the kingdom about Mordecai. Haman came before the king at just the right time to get assigned the task of honoring Mordecai. Esther 7 And so the king and Haman went to eat with Esther for a second time. Over the wine the king asked her again, Now, Queen Esther, what do you want? Tell me and you shall have it. I'll even give you half the empire. Queen Esther answered, If it please your majesty to grant my humble request, my wish is that I may live and that my people may live. My people and I have been sold for slaughter. If it were nothing more serious than being sold into slavery, I would have kept quiet and not bothered you about it. But we are about to be destroyed, exterminated. Then King Xerxes asked Queen Esther, Who dares to do such a thing? Where is the man? Esther answered, Our enemy, our persecutor, is this evil man, Haman. Haman faced the king and the queen with terror. The king got up in a fury, left the room, and went outside to the palace gardens. Haman could see that the king was determined to punish him for this, so he stayed behind to beg Queen Esther for his life. He had just thrown himself down on Esther's couch to beg for mercy when the king came back into the room from the gardens. Seeing this, the king cried out, Is this man going to rape the queen right here in front of me in my own palace? The king had no sooner said this than the eunuchs covered Haman's head. Then one of them, who was named Harbona, said, Haman even went so far as to build gallows at his house so that he could hang Mordecai, who saved your majesty's life, and it's seventy-five feet tall. Hang Haman on it, the king commanded. So Haman was hanged on the gallows that he had built for Mordecai. Then the king's anger cooled down. Esther chapter 8 that same day King Xerxes gave Queen Esther all the property of Haman, the enemy of the Jews. Esther told the king that Mordecai was related to her, and from then on Mordecai was allowed to enter the king's presence. The king took off his ring with his seal on it, which he had taken back from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. Esther put Mordecai in charge of Haman's property. Then Esther spoke to the king again, throwing herself at his feet and crying. She begged him to do something to stop the evil plot that Haman, the descendant of Agag, had made against the Jews. The king held out the gold scepter to her, so she stood up and said, If it please your majesty, and if you care about me, and if it seems right to you, Please issue a proclamation to keep Haman's orders from being carried out, those orders that the son of Hamadatha, the descendant of Agag, gave for the destruction of all the Jews in the empire. How can I endure it if this disaster comes on my people and my own relatives are killed? King Xerxes then said to Queen Esther and Mordecai the Jew, Look, I have hanged Haman for his plot against the Jews, and I have given Esther his property. But a proclamation issued in the king's name and stamped with the royal seal cannot be revoked. 
You may, however, write to the Jews whatever you like, and you may write it in my name and stamp it with the royal seal. This happened on the twenty-third day of the third month, the month of Sivan. Mordecai called the king's secretaries and dictated letters to the Jews and to the governors, administrators, and officials of all the 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. The letters were written to each province in its own language and system of writing, and to the Jews in their language and system of writing. Mordecai had the letters written in the name of King Xerxes, and he stamped them with the royal seal. They were delivered by riders mounted on fast horses from the royal stables. These letters explained that the king would allow the Jews in every city to organize for self-defense. If armed men of any nationality in the province attacked the Jewish men, their children, or their women, The Jews could fight back and destroy the attackers. They could slaughter them to the last man and take their possessions. This decree was to take effect throughout the Persian Empire on the day set for the slaughter of the Jews, the 13th of Adar, the 12th month. It was to be proclaimed as law and made known to everyone in every province so that the Jews would be ready to take revenge on their enemies when that day came. At the king's command, the riders mounted royal horses and rode off at top speed. The decree was also made public in Susa, the capital city. Mordecai left the palace wearing royal robes of blue and white, a cloak of fine purple linen, and a magnificent gold crown. Then the streets of Susa rang with cheers and joyful shouts. For the Jews there was joy and relief, happiness and a sense of victory. In every city and province, wherever the king's proclamation was read, the Jews held a joyful holiday with feasting and happiness. In fact, many other people became Jews because they were afraid of them now. Let's open to Isaiah 42. In Isaiah 41, we again heard God predict the future and challenge Israel's idols to prophesy or do anything at all. Isaiah 42 Heading, The Lord's Servant The Lord says, Here is my servant, whom I strengthen, the one I have chosen, with whom I am pleased. I have filled him with my spirit, and he will bring justice to every nation. He will not shout or raise his voice or make loud speeches in the streets. He will not break off a bent reed nor put out a flickering lamp. He will bring lasting justice to all. He will not lose hope or courage. He will establish justice on the earth. Distant lands eagerly wait for his teaching. God created the heavens and stretched them out. He fashioned the earth and all that lives there. He gave life and breath to all its people. And now the Lord God says to his servant, I, the Lord, have called you and given you power to see that justice is done on earth. Through you I will make a covenant with all peoples. Through you I will bring light to the nations. You will open the eyes of the blind and set free those who sit in dark prisons. I alone am the Lord your God. No other God may share my glory. I will not let idols share my praise. The things I predicted have now come true. Now I will tell you of new things, even before they begin to happen. Heading, A Song of Praise Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing His praise, all the world. Praise Him, you that sail the sea. Praise Him, all creatures of the sea. Sing distant lands and all who live there. 
Let the desert and its towns praise God. Let the people of Kedar praise Him. Let those who live in the city of Selah shout for joy from the tops of the mountains. Let those who live in distant lands give praise and glory to the Lord. The Lord goes out to fight like a warrior. He is ready and eager for battle. He gives a war cry, a battle shout. He shows his power against his enemies. Heading God promises to help his people. God says, For a long time I kept silent. I did not answer my people. But now the time to act has come. I cry out like a woman in labor. I will destroy the hills and mountains and dry up the grass and trees. I will turn the river valleys into deserts and dry up the pools of water. I will lead my blind people by roads they have never traveled. I will turn their darkness into light and make rough country smooth for them. These are my promises, and I will keep them without fail. All who trust in idols, who call images their gods, will be humiliated and disgraced. Heading Israel's Failure to Learn The Lord says, Listen, you deaf people! Look closely, you that are blind! Is any one more blind than my servant, more deaf than the messenger I send? Israel, you have seen so much, but what has it meant to you? You have ears to hear with, but what have you really heard? Isaiah speaks. The Lord is a God who is eager to save, so he exalted his laws and teachings, and he wanted his people to honor them. But now his people have been plundered, they are locked up in dungeons and hidden away in prisons. They were robbed and plundered with no one to come to their rescue. Will any of you listen to this? From now on, will you listen with care? Who gave Israel up to the looters? It was the Lord himself against whom we sinned. We would not live as he wanted us to live or obey the teachings he gave us. So he made us feel the force of his anger and suffer the violence of war. Like fire, his anger burned throughout Israel but we never knew what was happening. We learned nothing at all from it. And now we open to Second Thessalonians 3. The Thessalonians must have wondered how they would hear of Jesus' return, given that Jesus would touch down so far from them at Jerusalem. We will be able to anticipate Jesus' return by whether the man of lawlessness has appeared, has drawn away many people by working powerful miracles, and has usurped God's position in the temple. Note that God has not given us the order or timing of these events in relation to what was foretold in 1 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians 3 Finally, our friends, pray for us that the Lord's message may continue to spread rapidly and be received with honor, just as it was among you. Pray also that God will rescue us from wicked and evil people, for not everyone believes the message. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and keep you safe from the evil one. And the Lord gives us confidence in you, and we are sure that you are doing and will continue to do what we tell you. May the Lord lead you into a greater understanding of God's love and the endurance that is given by Christ. 
Our friends, we command you in the name of our Lord Christ Jesus to keep away from all believers who are living a lazy life and who do not follow the instructions that we gave them. You yourselves know very well that you should do just what we did. We were not lazy when we were with you. We did not accept food from anyone without paying for it. Instead, we worked and toiled. We kept working day and night so as not to be an expense to any of you. We did this not because we do not have the right to receive such support. We did it to be an example for you to follow. While we were still with you, we used to tell you, whoever refuses to work is not allowed to eat. We say this because we hear that there are some people among you who live lazy lives and who do nothing except meddle in other people's business. In the name of the Lord Christ Jesus, we command these people and warn them to lead orderly lives and work to earn their own living. But you, friends, must not become tired of doing good. It may be that some there will not obey the message we send you in this letter. If so, take note of them and have nothing to do with them, so that they will be ashamed. But do not treat them as enemies. Instead, warn them as beloved fellow believers. May the Lord himself who is our source of peace, give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all. With my own hand I write this. Greetings from Paul. This is the way I sign every letter. This is how I write. May the grace of our Lord Christ Jesus be with you all. Let me start us out in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, how we would like you to come now. On the other hand, please wait to allow some of our friends and relatives to repent and come to you. As we wait for you to come, may we never get weary of doing good so that we become a demonstration of the gospel to others. May we never get the glory for this, but may you be glorified. Lord, for your sake, may your people show themselves in every workplace as industrious workers. Lord Jesus, Give us a greater understanding of God's love for us. And through that understanding, help us to endure in any trial. Give us awareness about Satan's lies and strength to keep standing against his attacks. And may your message in the whole Bible and especially in the gospel keep on spreading everywhere and be honored and believed.